Um, all right, so let's start again. So hello, everybody. My name is Lindsay Garcia. I'm the executive director of the 22Q Family Foundation, and this is Getting Artistic with Tessa Kohler. So we're super excited um, to be able to offer to you guys this fun and kind of relaxing, um, hopefully therapeutic experience with us all being, you know, dealing with quarantine and COVID and everything else that's going on in the world. Just want to give you something light and exciting to um, be excited about. Um, so we are going to be um, getting a little introduction into still life art. Um, she's going to talk more about that with us. And if you do have any questions, um, feel free. I'm going to be trying to man the questions for you. So if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat um, box. You should have a chat box on your screen. And also, if you're not comfortable with putting on your video, you do not need to. Um, however, if you do want to, feel free to. I think at the end, it'd be fun to kind of share everyone's art, but that's totally up to you. Um, and if you have to cut off early for any reason, we are going to be recording this and putting it on our YouTube channel. So um, you're more than welcome to kind of catch up afterwards. So um, I just wanted to introduce our very special guest, uh, Tessa Kohler. She's an adult living with 22Q, for those of you that do not know. Um, she runs her own bridal uh, alterations business, is an artist and a writer, and today we'll be sharing her artistic talents with us. And we're so excited to have you. So thank you so much, hey. Tessa. I'm going to let you take it away. Thank you. I'm very excited to be able to do this today. It's uh, a lot of quarantining going on, so I'm glad that we have the internet to do stuff like this, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start by teaching a very, very basic um, not really a skill. I actually learned this uh, in school growing up. Um, basically, I'm going to teach you what the mass of an object is. A mass is basically just the overall object itself. I don't know if you guys can see um, these tomatoes. And I'm going to teach you about shading and uh, shadowing, which is the value scale or a gray scale from white everything between white and black is a value scale. So think about how uh, light and shade hits your subject, you know, to get that circular um, structure. And if you look at the, you know, at these very simple tomatoes, you don't really necessarily have to focus on getting everything exactly perfect. That's not what drawing is about. It's really just getting a sense of your, um, you know, object and how it is coming off the page. You want it to look three dimensional off the page. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Now, as you can see at the top of your tomatoes, you've got some shadowing underneath this bit here, which you can really just have fun with and incorporate into your drawing, however you want. It's, it's actually lighter around this area because it's protruding outward. So there's that perspective there. And then there's some more shadowing on the side here. And especially on this side, because these two tomatoes are close together, right? So if objects are close together, there's going to be shadows on the sides. And this is the lightest part right here of the tomato. And also on this tomato too, which is going to identify your light source. Now, light source just is an indicator of how light is hitting your object or your subject. And so like when I do portraits, if you guys see those specks of light in, you know, in the eyes, I guess you could say, um, that is to hint at you where the light is coming from, how it's going to hit the face and how it is showing in, you know, those details. It really allows you to accentuate those details. So to start, I guess anytime you start drawing, you don't want to start with like super hard lines. There's hard and soft lines. You always want to be very soft in your application, just starting off. And actually, as you go through the whole process, and this applies to portraiture as well, or any kind of drawing, you know, project that you do, you're going to want to be very soft and smooth in your transitions between light and dark. And that's going to help you really get the shapes, proportions, and all that stuff accurate. Now, I'm not going to get too caught up in, um, you know, trying to get proportions spot on. I'm going to show you guys how you can approach these drawings and every drawing that you do here and, you know, in the future that will allow you to really get it, you know, to pop off the page. So I'm going to start by doing an experiment and you guys can do it along with me if you want. 
you want to hold your pencil to the side like this. So you, you don't want your point to be like this because that's going to create a hard line, right? Mm -hmm. You always want to do the soft lines, soft edges. And focus on the shape of the tomato. It's not a perfect circle. And it's pretty much got, you know, some abstract shapes here going on. And it's got some abstraction going on up here in this kind of starburst, you know, stem. These stems are connected and it's, you know, over to the other tomato. But let's just focus on one tomato to start. So you're gonna take your pencil and you're gonna lightly sketch, which is gonna allow you to get a general idea of the shape of it. And the proportion might actually just kind of fall into place naturally. So your light is gonna be right here. So you can draw a very light circle there just so that you can say, you know, okay, this is where the light's gonna be. The, the areas that are gonna be shadowed and very dark are, are on the sides here. So we're gonna shade that in. And of course, at the uh, base of the object here, there's gonna be more shadowing, even though this is kind of a crummy image, you can't really see that, but it is shadowed underneath these tomatoes here. So when an object is touching a surface, so let's say this is the ground. This is when there might be a line that's not necessarily a hard line, but a little bit harder than your soft edges that you're gonna create here. This is just indicating that the object is touching a surface. So you can go and highlight that in or add that in. And then we're gonna come on the side here. We're gonna make this pretty dark because the other tomato is casting a shadow on it. Now there's a difference between shading and shadowing. Um, shadows are what other objects are casting on your subjects. And shading is pretty much, it's just this. It's everything that you draw, you're, you're pretty much shading is how you're gonna apply it onto the surface. So, um, so this is like shading here. So we're gonna get the general shape of the tomato down through very light shading, being very light around your light source. And then being a little darker around here. And if you really want your tomato to pop off the page, to have a lot of deep perspective, um, think about these details with these, you know, shaded areas on the sides here. So um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. It may even be lighter on the very edge, but as you can see in this, it's kind of slightly lighter on the side here. It's got more shading here. So think of how, um, just try to think of, you know, this is a, a circle and you want it to really look like a circle, right? But it's not a perfect circle. So you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So at the top here, you can shade that a little bit because that's where your stems are gonna kind of sprout outward, but you're not gonna go into those details just yet. Then you can create sort of a, this pencil is being kind of stubborn actually. I'm going to switch pencils, which I, I learned so much. I never knew you held a pencil, you know. The sideways way. So I'm already I'm already learning a lot of skills. I hope everyone else is too. And by the yeah. way, just a reminder: if you have any questions, we can stop and feel free to start them in chat box. And I can um, send those over to Tessa for you. No, oh, I'm trying to hold this up here while doing this. That's a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I'm like, You're, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be very light in our shading up here. But you see how that structure is starting to kind of come out and there's not much information on the page yet. It's just starting to form. And that's really what every structure is, even a face. It's all, it's, it's a form, it's a, um, it's a shape. 
And even the most minute small details you want to bring out so that that adds realism to your drawing. So here, I'm gonna add even more shading on the side. And actually, as you go along in your drawing too, you're gonna see what needs to be, uh, you know, lighter or, or a lot darker. So like this has to be really dark up here, this should be really dark on the side, and this should be really light in here. So, um, and actually, if you have an eraser, you can use whatever eraser you want. I'm just using whatever eraser I've got around me, but for the light source, that might get shadowed over a little bit. So you can kind of take your eraser and just gently um, pick up some of that graphite. Now you can see it's looking like it's kind of cascading over there. And I haven't even added the stems in yet, right? Mm -hmm. You want it to look like it's really cascading outward on all sides there. Because that's where another light source is hitting. Because your tomato, I don't want to say it has a hole in it, but let's pretend that it does. These stems create um, a perspective there that's going inward. And you want to translate that in your drawing. So. I'm using my eraser to create a little bit more light up at the top of the tomato here. Could you possibly, um, when you get a chance, just kind of hold your um, video closer to the picture? I just want to kind of see, oh, yeah. the, or, or your paper up closer, just to kind of um, see the exact detail that you're doing. Yeah, so let me... Just for a second, yeah, that'd be great. Oh, that's better. Yeah, thank you. Whoops, my computer just came on. Oh, no, <laughs> sorry. I don't want that dying in 15 minutes and it will. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna take off, or I'm gonna pick up some of that graphite up here because I want this up here to be light because it's pro protruding outward. And then, so in here, now this is actually something on the tomato. This isn't, you know, a shade or a shadow. This is just, a defect on the tomato, which you don't have to add if you don't want to. But if you wanted to, just to add some detail to make it look realistic, you can go in there and just kind of lightly pencil that in, if you choose. And as you can see, I'm gradually increasing the value scale and actually, before I go any further, let's talk about the value scale as it is right now. So if your drawing looks kind of like this, you'll see that there's a lot of values going on here already. This is right now the lightest side. This is super dark. This is super dark. But there's a bunch of different scales going on here. It's basically a gray scale. So think about this. Let's draw some boxes. This is a really light. I don't know if you can see that. Here, I'll go down here. This is a super light value here. And actually this is a lot, a lot brighter than that. It's super light, it's as white as the paper. So we'll say, this is as white as the paper. This is slightly lighter, this is slightly darker. This is darker. This is super dark. And this is even darker. And this is darker. So you're just gonna keep going until you can get as not close to black as you can, but you wanna get really, really dark to have that good depth in there. So lots of depth. So now that you kind of see that, in every drawing I've done, I've made sure to really consider how my value scale is you know, being translated on that page. And actually with drawing, it's really just about translating how you're seeing an object. Mm -hmm. And there isn't a right or wrong way of doing that really. It's just what you're seeing and how you're um, translating it. And that, that's really the only word I can think to use. So I'm gonna make this even, even darker. 
And this is going to be slightly darker. So this is going to be somewhere like in this value scale here. Because this is now like the foreground of the tomato in here. So we'll add some more shading here while leaving this side a little bit lighter. And that's giving it that form and structure that this is a circular object. And there are vents in it. Okay, so now that we got pretty much this basic understanding of forming shapes through light and shading, now we're going to go on to some more detail. So now with the stems, you don't have to worry about getting it exactly, just the general amount of detail, just so that it looks like stems, you know. And the way to do that is you're not going to, again, draw super harsh lines and, and, and just kind of be random with it. You want to try to get it as close to precise as you can. So I'm going to show you something that I, I do in every single drawing when I want to emphasize detail. So holding your pencil on the side, you're going to move it upward just a little bit so that the point is, uh, I'm not even sure what degree or angle this would be at, but I think you guys can see what I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. I see. So for the stem, we're going to come upward. There's a curvature here. And then there's like a little nub there it comes out here and then it kind of separates like so. And at this stage, you can have a little fun and be sort of random. It's really up to how you want to draw the stem. So you can add some detail by creating some light linear uh, shapes in here. And again, we're going to focus on how shadow and light is hitting this. So super dark over here, pretty light over here, and it's kind of like a medium shade in the middle here. But then there's some, you know, lit spots around here. So, so we'll go with your pencil point or the point of your graphite here to emphasize that little detail in the stem. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm just kind of trying to get the information on the page at this point. And working at a very strange angle, so. <laughs> but it's working out. So see how I got this like very general shape with the stem? It's not just a straight line shooting up and, you know, it's got some curvatures in there that you want to emphasize. It's also got, you know, some oddball edges there that you can kind of play around with. Um, now you can take your eraser. I use, um, any eraser will work for this. I use eraser sticks that you can get like on Amazon, but you can just use a basic eraser. So if you feel like you're losing some details up here with the shading, which will happen, in the drawing process, you can just go back and kind of use your detailing eraser to get that a little bit more clear or clearer. And I'm going to actually brighten this up a little bit on the side here. And when I'm drawing, I use a blush brush that I got from Walgreens, actually, so that I don't mess up my image. So smart. Yeah, I don't want to smudge it, you know, and that just keeps it from getting too smudgy and, you know, you know, your hands getting all gross and stuff. So now we're going to go into the stem details. And again, here you can just have some fun. So as you can see, I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this a little closer here. So here there's a lot of folds, a lot of twists. Again, it's not just a straight line. There's light and shading that's, you know, indicating exactly how these structures are 
fanning out from the tomato. So to emphasize those details, again, you're gonna hold your pencil on the side and a little bit closer, like I'm doing here. And again, you can just have fun with this. You don't have to focus on being perfect. I'm actually just gonna kinda, you know, have fun with it. So have it come out. It's got a little curve at the end there at the tip of the, I don't even know what you call these, stems? I don't know. Yeah, and leaves. <laughs> or roots, I don't know. Leaves, I don't know. Yeah, stem, yeah. stem, stem leaves. <laughs> You're stem leaves. The wrong person. But as you can see, I'm just being very general about um, getting the structure down first. But it's already looking like, just by how I'm pressing the pencil. So I pressed it kind of hard here, then was very light here. It was very hard at the bottom because there's a shadow. Again, this is a shadow because this is casting a shadow here, but it's also casting light here. So we're going to do this just to give a nod to that detail that it's a shadow. Now we're going to come down in here, and this is going to be super dark. This is going to be like your blackest black almost shade right in here because of that not hole, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So, and then we're going to do the other little thing here. <laughs> <laughs> I love the terminology. I know. I'm, I'm not a tomato expert, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> so again, practice at this point here, holding your pencil in heavy and light, heavy to emphasize the shadowing, and then kind of curve it like so. And then you're going to be really light up here, and then a little harder on the sides there light in the middle. And then as you can see down here, as it's coming in closer to the, or I was going to say middle, closer to the center, we'll say center, um, it's going to be a lot darker. So we're going to darken that. And already I'm losing some detail because I've been doing so much shading, but that's okay. I'm going to fix that. So we're going to come in with that. Now this is how Seriously, I put all my supplies next to me before this started and <laughs> everything has disappeared. Okay, we'll use this. So I'm gonna come in with my eraser because I lost that detail there. I'm gonna do it on the side here. But you see how that's really starting to look more realistic with you know, those roots coming out there? Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go on to this root thing. Um, so this is kind of coming at you, but on an angle. It's not coming at you directly. You want to think about point of view and perspective in your, in your drawing. And with this here, it's kind of coming outward on the side. Um, I'm not really sure how to describe this, but if you think about proportion and you look at your subject, you can even take your pencil and not so much measure, but see how that, you know, how the end of that point there is lining up with the rest of your, you know, the tomato. So it's kind of at the top part there. And that, you know, this will help you get a sense too of the shape of the tomato. And if you're kind of on track with that. So I'm going to take, again, I'm going to take this tip of my pencil like this. I'm going to curve around there. So it's kind of curved. The shape actually I'll draw it for you. It goes like this. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? So it curves like this. It's got a little squiggly, you know, curve in there. So we're actually going to try to draw that. So it goes down like this and up like this, down like this, and up like that. And I already kind of goofed up, but oh well. I, I'm just going to shade over that because 
when I goof up, that's what I do. I just shade over stuff. <laughs> it works. So, so you see how that kind of looks like it's not coming at you, but that's how the little stem there is um, positioned. Now I'm going to take my pencil eraser. I'm going to go into it like so, just to emphasize more of that structure there. And go around here and do some more emphasizing. And now, as you can see, we're getting a little more nitty gritty details. So we're going to come in this way. And as you can see with this tomato, it's got this kind of squiggly edge in here. Um, I'm going to get really close. So it's got this squiggly edge in here and it fans out and it curls under like this. It's like a curly, twisty root. And uh, when you pay attention to, again, how light and shadow are forming the structure, you can see that it's kind of folded a little bit down here at the base. And then it, it turns, like it, it twists forward. I don't know if I'm saying yeah. that right but I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to draw this little detail here, which is really going to be just a shadow that we can shade in there. And then we're going to come down on the side like this. And this area here is pretty dark, but not too dark. So this spot here, as you can see, this is super dark near the center. Yeah. This is a bit slightly lighter. So this is probably in this value scale here. This is gonna be a bit lighter. So it's gonna be a bit more like this. Then it's gonna curve. So it curves, it's super light here because the light source is coming in from this way, right? And it's also hitting, you know, this, you know, structure here. So we wanna highlight that. So it's going to curve and then turn and it has a little nub there. <laughs> <laughs> I probably shouldn't call it nub. I don't know what to call these things. So here we go. You see how I kind of ever so slightly added that little twist. Now I'm going to create the shadow that it's making on the fruit. So the shadow is not directly underneath the root. The shadow is fanning out this way. It's coming out this way because again, light is coming from over here. So the shadow has kind of, it's on the side of that structure. So we're going to just go like this. And it kind of meets up with the root down here. And we're going to keep this part lighter because now there's light hitting this part here. Actually, I'm going to lighten this up a little bit too over here. And if you guys, I don't know if you have any of these tools, but when I'm working on portraits or any kind of uh, object, I like to take a smudger and you can actually do this with your finger, but you see how it's kind of softening that shadow. Now I'm going to do it with my finger. Now, sometimes the, the warmth of your finger is has a, a nicer effect because tomatoes are very soft, you know, they're very squishy. And you want to um, you want to emphasize that too. So it's really just whatever you got to smooth that graphite. I, I don't even think I'm using the best paper here. This is like 15-year-old paper I'm using. <laughs> so I'm actually going to use this. Uh, blending stubs so that you guys can see what I am talking about. So as we blend this, you'll start to see where the light source is coming in here. So this is super dark over here because of the other tomato. And then it starts to lighten up coming in here. Now I'm easing off the pressure a bit here because I don't want it to be too dark. Then I'm applying more pressure down here. 
And sometimes in drawings like these, it can be hard to distinguish, um, you know, certain details with shadows on a subject. And by that, I mean, like here, there's actually a defect on the tomato, but it actually just looks like a shadow. So I'll show you a little trick um, to add some realism there so that there's not that confusion when you're doing a still life. And you can actually do it with whatever eraser or tools you've got. So here, I'm going very lightly with my stump, blending stump. And your finger can also be a blending stump. So, <laughs> um, I actually wish I were using computer paper because that would be a lot easier to blend with your finger. So this is a little trick that I'm going to show you. Now with your eraser, you're going to first study uh, the, this little defect on the tomato, I guess you could say. Actually, before I use my eraser, it is pretty dark. So this is actually about as dark as this over here and this over here, but it's a defect. So this is what I'm going to do. So you can kind of hold your pencil in different ways too. You can, um, you know, there's different ways of holding and placing the point of the pencil on the paper to achieve certain effects. And all right, so I'm going to get this little defect in here. Sorry to call this tomato defected, but it is. So here we go. There we go. Looks like it got dropped at the grocery store. Okay. <laughs> All right. So with my smudge stick, I'm going to first go in that detail real quick before I go into it with my eraser to show you guys. Full skill. All right. Whatever eraser you've got, you're going to study. Um, just what's going on with the structure in the foreground. This is the foreground. The tomatoes are actually by default in the foreground of the image. There's background, foreground, I think middle ground. I don't know if that's right. I kind of forgot how that works. It's been a long time since I've actually taught a class and done an art class for that matter. So um, I'm going to show you this eraser detail. So again, hold your eraser on the side so that your eraser kind of has, so that you get like a sharp point on your eraser. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So um, I wish I had an actual eraser, pencil eraser to show you guys, but I do not. I thought I did. Oh, well. so try to get your eraser to come to as much of a point as you can and just very lightly go around those little, um, uh, I, I'm not sure what you want to call them. Spots. <laughs> there we go. Spots. <laughs> so you're kind of just like blending <laughs> those edges a little bit of yeah. the spots. Yeah. So you want to pick up some of that graphite a little bit. And this pencil is being very stubborn. I need a hard edge eraser. So because actually you guys are probably using hard edge erasers. That is a soft edge eraser. So let me, this actually just came in the mail the other day. So let me pull it out if I can. Here we go. All right, I'll be able to show you a lot easier. So, all right, there we go. I wanna pick up a little bit of that graph <clears throat> graphite and smooth the edges of these little spots. And then you want to lightly go over them and smooth the edges again. So it's kind of a process. Um, you really just kind of have to use your eye at this stage. So we'll come in. But as you can see, now it's starting to look like 
this is something that's on the tomato as opposed to you know something around the tomato or you really want to get as much of that graphite picked up but not too much very subtle so it's all these easy transitions with lighting and shading but you see how i got some of that detail in there now it actually looks like there's something on the tomato now yeah so again you can take your finger if you have a blending stump you can use that and you're gonna smooth out these little edits here you can even fan the tomato out a little bit just to make sure you got that proportion. You want to smooth out those details that you etched in. And then up here, I'm smoothing out these details just so They're not totally in your face. Okay. And you can even make this light here. You see, whenever light hits a subject, even though it looks like a circle, it's not a perfect circle. Mm -hmm. So it's super light here, it, you know, again, think about this scale. It's very light here slightly darker a little darker and then over here it's almost like really dark right you see that gradation happening right here yeah so we're gonna highlight that a little more now this is the lightest point make it slightly darker not too much slightly darker than what i've got and then this is super, super dark here. There we go. And then with your blending tool or finger, you're going to lightly blend all that. Okay. But you see how it's really starting to look like an actual tomato, you know? But, yeah. Yeah, but of course, when you're just starting off any drawing, this applies to portraits or whatever it is you're creating, in the early stages of the process, people get really um, carried away with making sure it's looking like what you're drawing. And when you're first starting out, it's not gonna look like, you know, yeah, anything, you know, until you're close to the end of the drawing or, I guess more in the middle of the drawing, but um, we're going to get some more shading up here, more blending up here, smoothing. Blending is also smoothing and spreading the graphite. So it's really just a way of making things look less etched on the surface. You want things to look very smooth and effortless. See? Now, let's focus on this part of the tomato that is touching the table. Now, as you can see, this is a picture that I took with my not so great cell phone. Um, <laughs> So there should actually be more shadow, but I'm going to show you guys a little trick. Um, so when an object is touching a surface, there is going to be a harder line. I should probably go like this. So now watch this. A really fine line, right? Yeah, so it's a pretty fine line that actually kind of vanishes as you work upward the 
of the tomato. So it starts with a hard line at the base, and then as you go up, it gradually lightens until it almost disappears. I'm going to do that over here. Again, you want to smooth that out. And as you can see, now we're creating a shadow from the fruit as it is hitting the table. We're going to fan it out this way. You can do this with your finger too. You want the shadow to be a little darker over here because there's the other tomato, which are we going to have time to do the other tomato? Probably not. We can just focus on this one. Want to just yeah, focus? I think that's a good idea. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to show you guys one more trick with making your object, grounding your object in space is what I like to call it. Space and time. <laughs> so with your pencil or eraser rather, Um, you're going to want to erase the side here a little bit. You still can pick up some of that graphite, not a lot. You can do this with your eraser, but you see how that's starting to smooth out and look a bit more realistic. Now I'm going to work up actually a blog post after this about essential drawing tools that you can get just very cheap. Like I get stuff at Walgreens and uh, the local art store that really help bring your drawings to life. Um, if you guys want to continue to do more drawing after the study. Um, again, keep smoothing out that line. And then we're going to take my pencil or your pencil. And we're going to very lightly and very straight. Like you see how I'm going like perfectly horizontal here. This is this is going to emphasize the table it's sitting on. Going very lightly, but being very mindful about the direction of my strokes while being very light at the same time. Now, with every drawing, you want to build things up in layers. You don't just want to slap all the details down right away. It really takes a lot of layers and a lot of time to get that depth to define those details and edges. I'm going to make it a little bit darker down here, actually, because at the base of the fruit, it's going to be darker. Because the t or excuse me, the table is also shadowing it. And then I'm going to go even darker. So you'll see my line here. Get even darker because it's laying right on this edge here. And then it's going up. And these edges are casting this shadow. So just so you see, I'll make this even darker. So there we go. Now with your smudger, actually, I'm going to try using my finger. That's not going to work. <laughs> You know, smooth and spread that graphite. All right. You can actually go around your whole fruit and smooth it all out. Now for the final or I should say finishing details. I like to kind of go in and make sure that my edges are a little more defined. So 
but not too much. And if you want to add some highlights with your eraser, very lightly with your eraser, just go in and pick up some of that graphite again, just to make sure these stand out, of course, not too much. Some of these details got a bit lost in the process that happens with every drawing. There we go. You see how that's kind of all smoothing out there? Yeah. But it's also looking um, more realistic as well. Now, down the center here, I wanted to make that a little darker just so that you guys see that it's the darkest part. The top and the bottom are pretty much going to be the darkest parts of your subject. And there are very dark areas in here too, but these are going to be much, much darker because that's what gives it that whole mm -hmm. circular look. So again, I'm just going in on the sides here just to make sure everything's well defined. Um, this easel is extremely old. There we go. Kind of wobbling there. I'm going to come down here, add that. And actually, I forgot to add this shadow. So if you look at this, pretty dark under here, mm -hmm. a lot darker here. It's still a bit light on this part of the fruit because it's protruding outward from where that center is. So we're going to add that shadow in like this. The shadow is a bit closer to the uh, root there. And now with this shadow, not just a typical you know, shape. So you see there's a shadow there, and then it kind of fans out a bit. Yeah. So with your finger, I'll use my finger, you can actually do this. And make it look even more shadowy. See that? Yeah. And again with your eraser, if you want to add more depth and dimension, come around the side here, which I'm having to do, because this is the top part of the fruit before it curves down. Can make it slightly lighter. Even the shadow part slightly lighter. Even even the shadow, this is another thing I want to explain to you guys. Even the shadow is not the same value scale. So you can't just say, okay, it's this value scale, it's going to be that. It's going to be darker, closer to the object, a bit lighter further away from the object. So further away from the object, we can even lighten that up a bit. But you see how that just pops there? Yeah. Like a realistic shadow. You can even brighten this up over here just to add more dimension to that curvature of the tomato. Lighten up this shadow. And lighten up that side there. And then what I'm doing here is on the very edges of your subject, it's going to be a tad lighter. So again, this just adds more dimension and perspective in your drawing. So we're going to smooth that highlight out and blend it in a little more so that it doesn't look like it's a cutout. You know, you don't want it to look like a cutout. So we're going to smooth that, those edges. 
Here we go. Very light pressure. There we go. This tomato is just about done. Okay. So at this stage of the drawing, it's really just about how much more work you want to do on it and what details you feel need to be defined. Um, but if you wanted to get really uh, crazy with the detail, um, you could take your eraser. You can even do this on your own time too, because these are details that like, you know, take me hours to do. But um, if you want to spend that time just to kind of add a little more realism to your drawing, I'm going to do an example of something here. So you can take your eraser and follow along with me just to lighten that up a bit. So with your pencil, I'm actually gonna sharpen this. You want your pencils throughout the whole drawing to be very sharpened. Sorry to reach over you. Because a super sharpened pencil will allow you to get... Now on these roots, um, there's tiny, it almost looks like hair particles. Mm -hmm. uh, peach fuzz, I don't know what you wanna call it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sticking leaves. Yeah, so if you want to, you know, incorporate that for some more detail, you can take your pencil and just hold it a little bit on an angle and be very light again in your application. Like so. Now, um, with a lot of drawings, especially portraits or, or other objects that I might draw, as you get more advanced in drawing, you're going to want to incorporate more tools in your drawings, like exacto knives and blades, just to get, you know, those specific details down to make your drawing look really textured. Um, so I'll give you an example. Um, which I'm not able to do because I cannot find, oh, you know what? Never mind, found it. Okay, this is a drawing tool that of course you have to be very careful with, but I'm gonna show you guys something so that if you wanna embark on drawing and making it a career and doing some cool things, I take an actual blade and I very lightly go in this not only spreads the graphite, it just creates kind of, it just creates texture. That's the purpose of doing this. Um, you know, you'll see what I mean. You don't want to take off too much of the paper. You want to be careful with that, but very, very lightly. It's just light scraping. Now, I'm not using the best paper for this. If, if the paper was thicker, that those details would come up a lot, a lot better. But you can also take your eraser. So I'm going to do this. Wow, this, this easel is really wobbling on me. There we go. And I'm going to show you how to get those details with your pencil. Okay. Oh, if I can find my pencil, here it is. All right. So I'm using very teeny tiny marks. Can you guys see? Let me actually put the pad closer. There we go. Very teeny tiny marks. Just to get that kind of feathery <laughs> yeah, look. feel. Oh, wow. And then with the stem, um, there are actual lines on the stem. So if you take your a very sharpened pencil, you can very lightly add in those details. You can do this on your own time or now if you like. It basically, um, you just want your subject to look, I don't just want to say realistic, but to look tangible, you know, to I look. Jump it off the page, yeah. Yeah. 
So as you can see what I'm doing here, I'm gonna move it closer again. I'm adding some of that fuzz in those roots there. I just wanted to give you a heads up in about four more minutes. Oh, really? Wow, that was No, fair. blew by. <laughs> well, you got it done almost in perfect time. Yeah. I had a feeling I wasn't going to have time to do both tomatoes, but that's, that's cool. It's, it's good to just do one. So again, you can lighten these areas up too. I always remember to build in layers if you really want your drawings to stand out, to pop. You can even take your eraser and use your eraser as a smoothing tool. Um, by that I mean you can just take it very lightly, smooth those grainy edges if you don't want your drawing to look too grainy. Now I'm using a very textured paper and again if you're thinking about pursuing drawing, you want to use paper that is generally a lot smoother, like Strathmore Smooth 300 paper is really good to use. Um, that's what I use for those really detailed portraits you guys have been seeing on Facebook. Um, you can just get those on Amazon and your local art store. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I will work up a blog post about drawing tools if you guys want to like do the study again or a different study yeah. and get yourself really acquainted with um, these techniques that I taught you today. And again, I'm just kind of going through picking up some graphite, smoothing it out. And you guys can do this with your eraser too. But as you see, there is a nice value scale going on here that is really making your tomato just first off the page. I wanted to define that edge a little bit. So let me just do that because that definitely got lost. So that'll be my last detail. Just defining this edge and then smoothing it out. So always think uh, when you're drawing, so, you know, you can do pencil, blending stump, eraser, pencil, eraser, blending stump. It's really about um, what you're trying to achieve with light and shading. Um, just some things to keep in mind when you are drawing. Well, I've learned so much today. Awesome. I wouldn't say mine looks as good as yours, but I'll share what I did. It's that is awesome. For first time. I'm not an artist, but... I feel, I feel a little impressed with myself right now. So, um, you know, if anyone else is, that is on this uh, meeting wants to send in pictures of their um, tomato or share it right now, you're more than welcome to. Um, I'm going to try to make sure that we offer this uh, recording on our YouTube channel. So, um, oh, I think maybe Gracie wants to share hers. Okay. I'm not a drawler either. I'm really bad at it. We're all artists, right? My drawing looks like a little kid did it, so. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna video this. I wanna see that again, that is so cool. Wow. Wow, but well, look at all the shad, like the shading you're doing. I mean, I, yeah, I've never really drawn anything like this before, so. Yeah, this that really awesome. doing, So, it's, it's, yeah, I learned. <laughs> that's amazing, can I have your name too? What's that? Uh, can I have your name too? Gracie? Gracie, awesome. That is beautiful. Well Thank you. I love it. <laughs> awesome. And yeah, like I said before, if anyone else wants to share theirs, you're more than welcome to now, or you can email them pictures or, you know, just keep it for yourself. Um, I hope that we can offer more of these, you know, kind of live demos, whether it's art or, if you, if, you know, even if you're listening in the community and you have a, a talent that you want to offer to the community, um, we really want to try to make sure that we're reaching out to the community during this tough time and offer any kind of helpful um, artistic, you know, outlets out there to, to let people kind of know that we're all in this together and we're all family and here to support you guys. So I just want to, I just want to ask real quick, uh, would you guys be interested in doing an online thing, learning how to draw portraits? I'm sure. 
yeah, I mean, this was just a start. I'm sure that lots of people would be interested in that. So yeah. I think, yeah, anything that can get our creative juices flowing, that's like relatively inexpensive and something we can do from home. Oh yeah. I yeah. think we're all for that. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Tessa. We truly appreciate this and all the time that you gave us today and all these skills that we learned. My hands are nice and uh, dirty, which is probably the way they should be, right? <laughs> Um, so thank you guys again for joining um, stay tuned to more of these um, awesome artistic webinars in the future and hope you guys stay safe, stay healthy, wear a mask and um, we'll get through this together. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Have a great evening. Thanks a lot guys. Take Bye. care. Bye.